Hello all, welcome to rotrainers.com. In this session, we'll discuss about BI reports. And in BI reports, we'll discuss a specific topic called audit reports. And these particular reports are part of our Cloud ERP. Okay, so let's get into agenda. So what we try to do is we'll try to understand what is auditing and why we use auditing and what are the data sources of it and how can we design the custom reports for auditing reports or also we'll discuss about the standard reports which provided by Oracle for the auditing purpose. First thing is what is auditing? So auditing is nothing but we want to find what is happening to a particular component, nothing but like who created, when they created, when they deleted or when they modified, right? Nothing but who modified, nothing but like uh, the CRUD operations on a particular component, right? We just want to find out the CRUD operations on a particular component. So in our reporting scenario, it's like a, on a report, right? On a data model or a report, who created, when they created, who modified, all those things. So what we do is, so to get the data, we require a particular table, okay? But the specific thing is, these auditing tables are not available in normal Fusion app schema. They are available as part of a BI schema. So that's the reason we require a specific data source to be created, okay? Let us see what is the data source we have to use it. The first thing is, to design auditing reports, you require a data source, okay? So like uh, generally in the BIP, whenever you want to design any report, you require a table and that table belongs to a particular schema. Similarly, now in the auditing scenario, we want to design an audit report that belongs to a particular schema, that belongs to a particular table and that table belongs to a schema. So that schema here, it is a specialized schema where we have to create the schema information via data source. Okay, so what we have to do is navigate to the BIP XMLP server, click on administration and here in the data sources, click on JNDI connection. And here in the JNDI name, you have to mention this one only. JDBC slash audit view DB and data source, you can mention any custom name, okay? But generally you can you can prefer this one or you can have any name, but the JNDI name should be this one only because this is the one which is having the information about your particular data source connection, BIP data, BIP specific data source and schema information. And after that in the security, you select all the relevant things whichever you want it, or you can select everything whichever is there. And also after that, click on apply and also make sure that you click on test connection to just validate whether connection is correct or not, okay? That is a first thing you have to do when you want to create auditing reports. Next thing is, like when you say auditing, we just need to understand what is the time period of your audit, right? Now let us say, when you're dealing with the reports, it will have a huge set of information, right? Like uh, the set of BIP reports in the fusion, and you, when you're enabling auditing on it, you'll have a huge, huge set of logs which will be there. So that's the reason what Oracle does is, by default, it enables auditing, but the thing is, it will purge the data within 90 days. I think for every 90 days, it will purge the auditing information of your of your BIP reports. So, but you want to, you know, like uh, retain the information, the only way what you can do is you always have a scheduled job which extracts the data for each 90 days and, you know, like stores in your particular archive file server or somewhere. That way, you know, you'll have all the information of your particular BIP auditing stuff. So this is how you can enable the auditing. Okay. And we have seen how do we create a data source and we have seen how do we create auditing. By default, anyway, it is enabled. It does not need to do anything. Next thing is from where we can get the data. So there are these set of tables or views which are available. Okay. The IAU set of tables, which are of BIP, which are available, which has all the information about your auditing. And the major important one is the BI publisher underscore V. We does not refer to these tables because we already have a view which is created by Oracle. We just need to simply refer to this view to get all the outing information, okay? Next thing. So now here, if you observe one of the simple query from the, based on this particular BI publisher view here, if you observe the first one. So here, this particular view is based on the IAE tables and it has, you know, a relevant naming, different naming convention. We just need to find out what exactly, which column is for which purpose. And here, if you observe one, the first column here, even type, nothing but operation. Resource subtype is nothing but object type. Resource is nothing but object like that, okay? We'll get all this information from the Oracle existing standard report, but this one of the sample query from there, from there itself. And here, just observe this example. So in this one, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find out the list of data, the list of, you know, like objects which are modified in my resource folder, like a custom slash reader, okay? And here, if you observe it, it gave me, you know, a couple of records, but here, if you see the highlight, 
So I could see like uh, this particular test to data model was deleted. It was updated. It was created. OK, so what I'm trying to tell you is like we can get all the information about your particular your particular VIP object. It can be all CRUD operations. OK, so this VI publisher view will have all the information. We just need to refer them appropriately and for each action you'll have the information. OK. Now, so here if you are like, uh, let me go it before going further. Let me show you the information from here. Let us say so here if you observe, let me refresh the same existing report. OK, so now here I have a rename also like uh, let us say I have like earlier. I know I named my report as like this one and later I changed to with XX audit report dot XDO instead of XX AYDU report dot XDO. So how this particular auditing will help you is nothing but like it allows us to find out what are the custom objects which are available and who deleted. Let us say in the worst case, sometime what may happen is like uh, accidentally it would have been deleted or accidentally it would have been modified, something like that. You may not have version information here, but you will ex it will you'll have information about like whether the object is available or not, whether object is deleted by someone, it is modified by someone. You can have that particular clarity. Okay. And now what we do is so everything plays around with this particular table. Everything, all the information about your auditing will be available in this table. Okay. So now get to the next slide. So here, if you observe, there are total six reports which are provided by Oracle for the auditing purpose. Okay, we can either design our custom reports using that particular BI publisher underscore view. What you can do is just refer to these particular standard reports, which already have pre-built set of you know like a data model as well as a report templates. Simply, we can use them, and let us see some of them. Okay, let me go to that. Now I'll just go here. Got it. And now these are the six standard reports which I'm talking about. And here, if you observe the data model, I'll start with the first one, BIP catalog object audit trial. So here, when you're trying to execute this report, it requires three parameters from to date as well as user information. Okay, so username is not mandatory. Okay, I'll just start with only let us say I want to get all the set of objects which are modified today. Okay, I'll just start with today and I'll just execute. OK, so maybe let's say it is concerning time also. I'll try to give like this so that it will not have any issue. OK. Let me give this way. OK. So it says, you know, these are some of the things which, you know, like it would have modified or created or something, right? Updated, created, and all these things. Now, here, if you observe the same way, like uh, let us get the report, standard report, I mean, the audit report, JP catalog object audit trial. So just execute this one. Let's say I'll try to, yeah, this should be maybe from last month, I want to get the audit information. And till today, apply. And now it tells you the catalog update history, nothing but who created, who modified, and all the information, right? Can you see? All the information. And what you can do is, like, as of now, let us say it is providing history. Let us say you want to have all the object information. What you can do, you can just mention distinct, distinct of object. That's it. So that will that will give you the information list of distinct objects which are available. Okay. So now user action history. Let us say you want to find some information based on the user action. You can also find that. Okay. So Cassie Brown, what he did, when he did, what what all he did, right? Like this, you can also find out on which object also you get it. And similarly, catalog activity. Okay. So these are about the catalog activity, the latest 20 actions, right? Now, one more important thing is like, uh, let me show you this one. So now when you get this particular standard XDM file, so here, this is the one, the zip file. 
this you can get from the metalink i'll try to provide the information so once you get that one the first thing you have to do is make sure that you create a data source okay and also you can observe the data source information on the from the data model so click on this particular data model and you just click on this particular first one properties and here you can inform you can find out the data source which it is referring the data source which it is referring until unless you refer to this data source you cannot get that particular table the bi publisher underscore view okay so the bi publisher underscore view works only from this particular data source okay let me show you the data source information also before winding up so click on administration and here click on jnda connection and here i created two set of stores like a uh, this should be available by default maybe it may not be available if it is not available better you create this data source i'll click on this one here in my instance it was not available so i created the first one and also as well as second one also just for different purpose okay let's wait for some time Okay, yeah. So this is how you can mention the data source information. Just click on test connection. It should be successful. Okay. And other important property, right? Like enabling auditing. Anyway, that is enabled by default. You does not need to worry about it. Okay. It it is enabled by default. So the major important things to just review. Like the first thing is data source enabling audit, and also. This particular view, and to understand the column information, the best thing what you can do is execute the standard reports. And I prefer the first one, the first audit data report for execution. And this in, this will have the good amount of information. This one, the second one, sorry, this one will have a good info, good amount of information about what is happening to your particular catalog objects. And from there, you can design your custom set of reports, which will show you the information about the distinct objects which are available, whether availability of reports are not there. This also, this sorting also helps you. Like, uh, let us say, when you're designing the set of reports for your particular uh, project, fusion development project. So, what may happen is you want to find out whether a particular report repository is available in a particular instance or not. Let us say, in the development, I have 100 reports, but in the production, you see that like uh, there are only 75 reports. How do you validate which is available or not? Manually, it is doesn't make any sense. The best way is get the extract from dev, get the extract from production, compare, and just deploy the missing objects, right? Or maybe let us say you want to find out any template is updated by someone. Let us say uh, the update of a particular component, right? Like uh, based on the timing, you can find out. Okay, somebody modified this component on a particular day. That way also this auditing helps a lot. Okay, so this all about the auditing reports in the BIP. Thank you. Sorry, let me show you one more information. I forgot to show you the meta link. Yeah, this one. So this is a very important document repository, which is having all the information which I discussed. Okay, and and it has the information about the the source code as well as the PDF document, which explains all the information about auditing in the BIP. Thank you.